All right, so I got a, a comment here from Mike Peterson. Uh, so let me read it. He says, thank you for continuing the posts on here despite, uh, despite being Catholic. E. Michael Jones names those who have taken over our country when media and government are controlled. Dot, 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 dot. We have lost. Okay. My point is him always saying one must be baptized to be saved. Can this be backed up by scripture? Alright, so let me first just comment on this here. Media and government are controlled. We have lost. Yeah. Uh, this world is already lost. We live in a strange land, right? We are strangers in a strange land. This is not our home. Okay, I'm not sure who E. Michael Jones is, uh, but who cares? It doesn't matter, does it? And yeah, never. I don't believe I've seen that guy before. Doesn't look familiar to me, but who cares? So, uh, Mike Peterson asked a great question here. Um, my point is him always saying that one must be baptized to be saved. Can this be backed up by Scripture? Okay, first of all, let me give a simple answer in saying, yes, you must be baptized to be saved. Now, we have to, def we have to define what baptism is. All right, so I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to make a short story long here probably, but I'm just going to tell you, when I was a new believer, I came uh, across a lady that told me that I had to be baptized by water in order to be saved. And, I, and so she thought, she told me emphatically that I was not saved because I had not went through a water baptism. And you know, I <laughs> I had to go home and read my Bible. It does, I had to read what I had already read to make sure that this lady's wrong. I mean, this is an older lady. And um, I just didn't, at the time, didn't understand how could somebody get that wrong. Because if you read, here, let's read. First of all, uh, you know, there's a couple of things I want to show here. Let me first of all show the baptism of John. Okay. Let's go to Matthew 3 first. Alright. Real quickly here. Yeah, this is something I, I just don't understand how people can miss this. So let, let me highlight the word baptism here so we can see it. Now, John the Baptist, okay, this is not the same John as the book of John, the first, second, third book of John, nor the John of Revelation. Okay, this is John the Baptist. And in those days, John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord make his paths straight and the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins and his meat was locusts and wild honey then went out to him Jerusalem then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father, for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. 
And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that comes after me is mightier than I whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. Then then comes Jesus. Okay, so Jesus uh, is the one he's speaking of here in verse 11 when John says, He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. All right, so we got a definite difference between the baptism of John and the baptism of Jesus. They are not the same. Of course, the baptism of John is representative or um, symbolic or sort of a, a foreshadowing however you want to look at it it's not the true baptism the true baptism is the baptism of Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost now this parallels what we read in John chapter 3 when Jesus says verily verily I say unto thee ye must be born again that which is born of the flesh is flesh that which is born of the spirit is spirit all right so being baptized with the Holy Ghost is being born of the Spirit of God all right I mean it's really not complicated but if you lack faith if you have if you're lacking faith <laughs> really that's the only way to put it if you're lacking faith you're not going to be able to see it you're not going to be able to understand anything and that's that's prophecy told all throughout the Bible those that don't have eyes to see nor ears to hear nevertheless when they turn to the Lord their eyes shall be open they shall be they'll, they shall see and hear and be healed by our Lord Jesus Christ all right so this is interesting to me because um, I like you know I want to I want to tell a little story here, and that is years ago I went to a mega church <clears throat> in a small town basically, I think there was a thousand people there, a thousand people in a at this church in a town with just barely over ten thousand people. Think about that. This place uh, is huge. And I go there, and, uh, you know, f it's an hour and a half service, and, you know, about 45 minutes of it is uh, singing and, and uh, you know, praising God and that sort of stuff, and, and, uh, and then baptizing uh, people up on stage and that sort of thing. And then 45, the other half of it was uh, preaching, well, there was some kid up there preaching about the radical love of God. And I, you know, I'm nitpicking here. But I don't think you need to add anything to the word love. Love is a word that is powerful enough all by itself. Nevertheless, this kid also spent a whole bunch of time talking about the baptism of John and of course we see people being baptized up on stage whole big production and that sort of thing and uh, uh, nothing wrong with that at all but then as we got closer and closer to the end I thought well, yeah the water baptism is great but how can you spend all that time talking about the water baptism and not ever mention once the baptism of Jesus Christ. It's incredible. It was incredible to me. So I, I had to 
I had to write them. I wrote them an email and I got a response and um, I, so I asked him, I said, uh, you know, why, why isn't, uh, you know, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you know, when it says, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I believe is how I phrased the question. Why wasn't that talked about? You spent all this time talking about the water baptism, the baptism of John, but why didn't you speak about being baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire? And the response I got was, well, that's the baptism of Satan. I'm not kidding you. That's what he said. The baptism of Satan. This was <clears throat> not the same preacher. This was an older, uh, you know, I don't know, deacon or whatever you want to call those guys. Uh, you know, he told me he went through Bible college and, you know, I guess you can call him an expert. Told me that this was the baptism of Satan. And I. Uh, it, to me, it's unbelievable. You guys <clears throat> are responsible for a thousand people in a small town. Nearly 10% of the entire town goes to your church on Sunday. And you don't know something as basic as the baptism of Jesus Christ. To me, just astonishing. It really was, uh, you know, really revealing to me that hey, you know, I got all these people telling me I got to go to church. I got to go to church, and then I go to church, and this is what I see. So I had to walk him through Matthew three, and then of course. <laughs> You have to say, oh, no, I guess I, my mistake. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, I accept his apology. I'm, you know, glad to have the opportunity to be able to, re you know, reveal this uh, to this individual. But it's astonishing. You go, what, four years, two years in Bible college, whatever. It shouldn't take you 10... I mean, you don't even need Bible college to understand that, do you? I never went to Bible college. I was kicked out of high school. Now, granted, I was in high school for six and a half years, so, you know, based on schooling, you know, the, the amount of schooling that we everybody has, you know, I, I'm smarter than everybody because I went to school longer than just about anybody, right? If that's how you want to base intelligence I went to school longer than you right you were at what high school for four years three years or four years that ain't nothing Jack I was in high school for six and a half years until they kicked me out of course the schooling doesn't mean nothing obviously when an individual says that they went to Bible college they come out of Bible college and they're in charge, or maybe he wasn't the, you know, he's just one of them, that one of the deacons. When you're, when you got a church that big, you probably have a bunch of people uh, that they call higher ups or whatever. I don't know. Really, I don't. So, this guy, <laughs> an expert, I, I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know what they talk about. I don't know what they do. But how in the world. Can you not know the very simple... I mean, you're doing a whole thing, a whole big production on baptism. Obviously, the preacher, he didn't know anything. <laughs> Apparently, didn't know anything about it. I think they were just interested in selling water baptism. You get people up there, you splash water on them, you take the money from them, that's really what it's about, isn't it? To me, that's incredible. I really, that to me, just, you know, from a observation standpoint, 
to me that's what it looks like it looks like you're taking advantage of people who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ taking their money splashing them with water making them feel good meanwhile you yourselves don't have any understanding of the Bible you pretend to be experts in okay so anyways to me I just want to share that with you there's an obvious difference now I want you to think about the the two thieves that were on the cross one to the left and one to the right of Jesus All right, the one was saved here let's go to it real quick and the one was not alright Luke 23 and where am I at here oh 43 okay alright so you got uh, you know a couple of you know malefactors one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him saying if thou be Christ save thyself and us but the other answering rebuked him saying dost thou not fear God seeing thou art in the same condemnation <laughs> I mean that's a great point isn't it you got one of these guys saying if you're the Christ save yourself and us well you can't do it so why are you you know roughing up this guy because he because you don't think he can do it either right and that's what exactly what this guy is doing here rebuking him and saying do you not fear God seeing that the art in the same condemnation and we indeed justly see they did break the law for we receive the due reward of our deeds but this man has done nothing amiss and he said unto him, Jesus Lord remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom and Jesus said unto him verily I say unto thee Today thou shalt be with me in paradise if you baptize yourself with water. No, there's no baptism of water. And this Jesus guaranteed him. This is not an exception. Well, I'll make an exception for you because your hands are nailed to the piece of wood and you can't do anything. He's not making an exception. He's telling him and assuring him that he has salvation everlasting life all right so this guy obviously did not get baptized with water he got baptized with the Spirit of God with the Holy Ghost all right and the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God same thing now um, let's do a quick word study let's see here um, so you see there's 91 mentions of the word baptize baptism and all this and that and it's, and it's all in the New Testament it's what John brought the baptism the water baptism and then of course that's sort of uh, symbolic if you will of the true baptism which is the baptism of Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost all right, so we got many examples of this all throughout the Bible. Okay, so you got like the circumcision. <clears throat> you got where after eight days you cut off the excess flesh or whatever. Uh, and then that's not the true circumcision. The true circumcision is the circumcision of the heart. And that's that's not a New Testament thing that's always been there for them to see it all right now Paul obviously he goes he goes into it um, explains it pretty well I think in Romans 2 especially okay now that's just one example okay so we got the example of Moses leading his people out of Egypt that's an example of Jesus leading us out of this wicked world okay so we got many examples of this going on now you notice here 90 well, we're not gonna go through 91 
instances of the word baptism, but um, as a, in regards to the question here, um, my point is him always saying that one must be baptized to be saved. So let's narrow down that uh, keyword search, baptize and save. All right, so if it was true that we have to be baptized in water to be saved, it should be pretty obvious, but there's nothing at all in the Bible anywhere that suggests you have to have water baptism to be saved. All right. Mark 16, verse 16. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. Okay, so there's nothing here that suggests that you have to have water baptism. Nothing at all. He said, Go, he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in the name in my name shall they cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues okay now very clearly nothing in there at all to suggest you have to have water baptism nothing at all okay one more time first peter chapter 3 verse 21 the like figure wherein to even baptism does also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. All right. Now, oh, this is such a great book, a great chapter. Let's... Let's reread this with a little more context. Right. Well, having a good conscience, that where as they speak evil of you, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. Right. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you. A reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. All right, for it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well doing than for evil doing. For Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison which sometime were disobedient, when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was uh, preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. The like figure, wherein to even baptism does also now save us, not the putting away of the flesh, or putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of good conscious toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him now again there's another example of the the whole world being flooded example of uh, you know you could draw a correlation between that and the baptism that John brought us and then the this world being destroyed by fire and so also Jesus baptizes us with fire is a prelude if you will of the end of the world when the whole world is destroyed by fire right so there's a correlation there also but let's let's break this verse down here a little bit the like figure wherein to even baptism does also now save us not the water baptism, but the baptism of Jesus Christ. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. All right. Not. Uh, so you, you know, you could say, look, this is 
people that say you got to repent of your sins, you know, hey, you have to agree that it's wrong to sin. Absolutely. But this idea of not sinning is not going to save you. <clears throat> right? Excuse me. This idea that you can all, you know, oh, I repent of my sin. Now you're saved? No. You're only saved if Jesus Christ covers your sin. You can't save yourself. You have no chance. Zero chance. The only chance you have is if Jesus covers your sin. You can't cover your sin. No matter how many times you say, I repent, I repent. So this idea, not the putting away the filth of the flesh, repenting of your sins, but the answer of a good conscience toward God, having faith in God, having true faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what this is speaking of. There's nothing else that he's talking about here in 1 Peter 3, 21. All right. And by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he was resurrected from the dead, so we put our hope in his resurrection. Right? He has resurrected from the dead, ascended to heaven, and promised to return for us. And he's going to do it. Who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels, authorities, and powers being made subject unto him. All right, just as he promised he will return I think this covers it right here I think um, there's if you have if you want me to have uh, you know if you want me to elaborate on anything that I share please uh, you know let's continue this conversation uh, sometimes I talk too much but it's very simple that the water baptism the baptism of John won't save anybody it never it was never able to save anybody. It's always been about the baptism of Jesus Christ. And how in the world anybody misses that is beyond me. It really is. I mean, it just astonishes me. Because when I see something like that, a guy go through Bible college, you know, it just, when I first became saved... I was 31 years old and I thought man I am so far behind everybody that is saved I thought I was so far behind all those experts and scholars that go to church you know that go to Bible college all those people I'm so far behind I have to read and read and read and read and I was reading and studying 12 hours a day for a long period of time in the very beginning and the first thing I did is I read the book of John and I went through Matthew Mark Luke and John and then I went through all the New Testament and then I went back to the Gospels again Matthew Mark Luke and John uh, in a relatively short time because I had to I had to I, I had to re read it and read it again to try to get to the level of in, in my imagination the level of everybody else you know the people that go to church on Sunday I figured they know all this stuff and I don't know squat and I met I mean squat I didn't go to church when I was a kid I grew up in a bar I grew up around alcoholics <laughs> I know I people that uh, looked you know people that spoke against people that went to church. That's the people I grew up around. So I didn't know anything at all as it relates to the Bible. Nothing. I mean, when I was 26 years old, a friend of mine asked me, he says, um, something about the Gospels. Do you know what the Gospels are? Or do you like the Gospels or something? I don't know what he said. And I said, no, I, I don't. Uh, I don't really know anything. Uh, about that, I you know I listen to 
mostly uh, heavy metal and, and death metal and you know speed metal and Metallica and all and he's like no 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 the Gospels and he explained to me I mean this guy was man he was great patient understanding he said no that the Gospels are the four books of the New Testament Matthew Mark Luke and John at 26 years old I thought he was talking about music I had no idea that they called the first four books of the New Testament the Gospels I didn't let alone what the gospel message was I didn't know none of that so he very kindly shared all that with me so here I am and then five years later I finally get it man I finally understand it and I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and I'm born of the Spirit of God and now I've got to catch up I've got a lot of catching up to do and so I'm reading and studying and going crazy and uh, loving it I love it right and then I go to this mega church biggest church I've ever been to and these guys don't they don't know Matthew 3 man it's like the third chapter of the New Testament and they don't understand something as basic and as simple as the baptism of Jesus Christ now what in the world is going on man how could they not know that I was knocking myself out trying to learn this stuff and then all of a sudden one day I realized these guys something wrong with these guys something wrong There's something wrong with the world I mean I knew there was something wrong with the world but man I didn't realize it was this bad you know what I mean <laughs>